Phelan is spelled P-H-E-L-A-N, Patrick Common Spelling. Again, he's the commander of Special Operations, which encompasses SWAT and other units. Joe, I haven't said as well, but. First name is Patrick, last name is Phelan. That's spelled P-H-E-L-A-N. It's like, how you feeling? Okay. I like that. Good. Like We're good. Commander? Thank you. Good. Yes, Commander. All right. Can you tell us, uh, can you kind of walk us through how can one of your own highly trained officer get shot by his own folks at a uh, violent situation? Well, I think that's pretty simple, simplifying a little bit, but I think one thing you have to recognize, the officers of the Metro SWAT unit, train for this every day. These are dynamic situations. We're hunting people that are wanted, that are dedicated to escape, that are dangerous, that we don't want to get into the community. So they train at this every day. Unfortunately, we do a lot of these operations. This doesn't happen. This is the first time I've known it's happened. So it's something that, uh, you know, it's devastating. It's not only devastating to the officers involved, it's, it's devastating to the police department. It was dedicated to escape. He didn't care who he hurt, whether it was his father, was whether it was his girlfriend, whether it's the public, these people are dedicated to escape and they don't care what apprehend him. He he ran, tried to escape via vehicle, could have killed anybody doing that, crashes into a house, they pin him into that location. Uh, they try several times, probably almost 20 minutes to negotiate him out of the car. They were able to rescue his his father who was there and, and also his girlfriend. He refuses to comply himself over and over again at nauseam, at repetition, trying to get him to surrender. We don't want to shoot you. We don't want to hurt you. Please give it up. He refuses to do that. He tries to get in the community, jumps a fence, tries to escape. Uh, fortunately for us, we have a canine in position, an officer in position. He turns to try to fire at an officer. Officer takes the action he needs to take. The suspect is terminated at that time. Right, but where is your SWAT officer in relation to that? Well, and, and what happens, and to answer that question, obviously, these are fast-moving situations. We're trying to keep this person contained. Unfortunately, he's breaking containment. Unfortunately, the other officer breaks what we call a plane around a corner. Once he realizes he broke that plane, is it exposed, it's actually a little bit too late for that. Before he could get position of cover, shots go off, he's injured. Can you explain that a little bit? Because, yeah, I read the thing, and it seems like it's a pretty fast-moving kind of It's fast-moving. What's the training in terms of officers? It's just too fast for that to happen. It's fast. Seven. Obviously, we, tactics are used. I don't want to give up a lot of tech, but tactics are used. We don't want to you know, have crossfires. If we could possibly avoid crossfires, obviously, these officers are highly trained. If there's a crossfire situation, hopefully, their training will, will take care of that. But uh, unfortunately, because he was moving quick advancement into the neighborhood where he could take hostage or whatever, unfortunately, he got a little bit ahead of him. He got himself in a crossfire, which he knew better. To do that, we're still reviewing that tactical review. We're going to do that, and uh, unfortunately, he what we call kind of broke a plane, which he knew he shouldn't have done, but uh, and was exposed. And but in simple English, can you explain to us what he broke, what broke the plane means? Was he between the bad guy right, I guess and I, the good guy? Actually, he was on the other side. So what we try to do it's a, a basic L ambush. So that once you fire in a certain direction, there's nobody behind that individual, except the, su the suspect is there. Beyond him, it's clear. So it's, it's OK to engage that suspect. Unfortunately, that officer got in behind the suspect. He should have held up. He came around the corner. What they're trained to do is hold that corner, okay, so not, and not to expose himself. Unfortunately, he came out trying, to, once again, you know, his best effort to try to contain that suspect. That's what he's thinking. He's doing his job trying to contain that suspect so it doesn't get into the community doesn't cause some more, yeah, take a hostage, whatever he can do. This guy was a dangerous individual. Oh, any other repercussions from that? The, the DA ruled that none of the officers broke the law in shooting the suspect at all. Right. Um, you guys are kind of, and, and or related to the shooting of the officer. Well, we're going we're doing a review right now. Obviously, we feel there's some, some errors were probably made, and we'll deal with that internally in our policy. Can you kind of explain, and I know you don't have to talk for it here, but like where, so you have the one officer, the suspect, the other officer, where everybody was kind of in relation to each other. Um, it's a little tough without a chalkboard, but right. basically he, the suspect jumped a fence and was traveling northbound in a backyard, any backyard, parallel to a, the house. There was an officer that was perpendicular to him that had him engaged. One officer went around the house that he was running perpendicular to, if this makes sense, 
and exposed himself at that other corner. So then we have this crossfire. I know it's a little tough to, to explain, but he's trying to get ahead of that, the suspect. In doing so, he got out in front of the suspect in a line of fire with the officer that engaged him. That, and did the that officer who, saw, who fired, did it happen so fast that he didn't, he, I mean, essentially, did he just kind of run out as he was firing, or why didn't it, he? It sounds like it was simultaneous. And it's hard to say exactly how he was hit, whether he was hit with the ricochet, was it through round? We really don't know that. For and certain. Said, and you said that these are rare, like in, in my memory, I don't remember one in Denver, one happened at Lake Whitley, very tragically, right, right. recently. Right, right. In Denver, when was the last time something like this happened? You know, without without checking, it was, I, I don't know. Like, I can't think of a time that happened. And once again, these guys train in, day in and day out. For this. These are tactical SWAT officers, Metro SWAT, full-time SWAT team, tactically trained every day, firearms, tactics, weapons. It, it, it's a rare occasion. Anomaly that this happened. It's, How are the officers? You know, it's it's devastating. It's devastating not only to to the officer that did the shooting. It's 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 devastating and painful to the officer that, that was hit. So is it's, he okay? He's fine. He's back to work. As a matter of fact, he just got released back to work. These are guys, like I said, that are dedicated to their profession and get back in the game as, as soon as they can. Is it is it back on SWAT? Back on SWAT, right? And we'll do a tackle review on that too. Like I said, that's that's still in the review process. <laughs> No, I don't think, I think I, the DA's letter is pretty specific, or I don't think it's conclusive where the shot came from, what officer shot, what round it was. I don't think it's conclusive on what it happened. It also includes information about uh, the suspect's father saying that he told his son to stop the car. Right. And the son was quoted saying, I'm not stopping for anyone. I, I think, you know, and I, I just want to let you know that, and we deal with this every day, and maybe not everybody understands this in the public, but. There's people out there that are armed and dangerous and dedicated. And they're dedicated to getting away, no matter the cost. Whether that means jumping in a car and running over people, shooting people, whatever it takes. And that's why we have these officers to, to do that, to train that, to combat that. So that's the point I want to make here. And it sounds like, I want to clarify, it sounds like you say, but it appears is that the officer, whichever officer fires, it's almost simultaneous as that other officer coming around well, that corner. The suspect is moving trying to escape the perimeter that we have them in, containment we have them in. They're trying to move the containment with them, still trying to give them to give it up. You know, obviously they had plenty of time if they wanted to shoot them right away, they probably had justification, but they're trying to get him to give it up. He's moving, they're trying to do containment. Simultaneously the guy comes around, he's moving, the officer comes around the corner, breaks his, the plane of that corner, an officer fires, two officers fire, and he's, he's struck, one of the officers struck. So that's... And obviously, we took every ad nauseum talking to this guy. His father was talking, his girlfriend was talking. We got them out of the car. We we're firing less lethal at him, trying to make him surrender to the, to the officers. We introduced some chemical agent into the car to try to get him. He, he, continues, to, he continues to to, to want to escape. He is actually at one point in time he's hit with a 40 millimeter round, and he drops a gun. He immediately reengages the weapon. So he, he's dedicated. He jumps a fence as he goes fence and he sees an officer he decides he's going to turn in my opinion he's, he turns with the weapon that like he's going to fire the weapon at that time the officers have no choice but to engage him. How much of a factor was it that you had this gas leak in the fire? Well, it's, it's, we can, we, I mean how much time do we have we don't know they're smelling gas we're using some pyrotechnic devices you know we want to make sure we get obviously the, the, the innocent people out of the way the people in the house we actually cleared that house as fast as we could to get people out of that house that he, he crashed into also, the father and, and, and his, his girlfriend at the time, we get them out of the way and we're trying to get him the best we can, but that's part of our job. We have to stay in that environment until we resolve that situation. How many officers were there at that scene, do you know? Well, SWAT officers actually engaged in that suspect, probably about six that actually engaged him. And there, the, officer, the suspect didn't actually fire during the encounter, right? No, no. When you say you engaged him, uh, were you used less than 
Rangers. Can you tell us a little bit more? In, in this particular instance, we use a 40 millimeter exact impact round. I, it's a sponge round. It's fired from a 40 millimeter shoulder weapon, and it uses uh, kinetic energy at impact to hopefully uh, produce, let, make the suspect surrender, cause him some kinetic, cause him some pain compliance. And hopefully, he'll give up. Is it a, a bullet? A it's it's a sponge a round, and I could show it to you to, if you want to see one. Get one for you to look at. Hey guys. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. Okay.